All right, now we got the leaf mulching out of the way. Yeah, sorry, I just had had to get it done. We had about an hour and a half of daylight left when we got back. I'm like, oh, I really don't want to mess with it tomorrow, so we'll go ahead and get it done today. So, got the leaf mulching done, then got dark now, and uh, going to show y'all a little bit of what goes into picking seed varieties. This gets more and more difficult every year. I promise you, here, here in a few years, these seed companies are going to want us to pick varieties for next year before we've even harvested this year's crop. Uh, right now, to get the maximum seed discounts, uh, at least with Pioneer, I know a lot of other companies are the same. We've got a place I ordered by December 14th of this year. I mean, heck, I, I hadn't even started hauling off my grain yet and hadn't even got paid for this year's crop. And already got to go ahead and place an order for next year's crop. And it's just gotten absolutely ridiculous. Used to, you know, you get them in usually between January 1st and January 10th. Uh, you know, you get get good discounts, and they seem like they just push it up earlier and earlier each year. I mean, we can't even catch our breath from getting done with this year's harvest. And, I mean, we've immediately got to jump in to planning for next year. Anyway, it's the nature of the game. Can't say I like it very much. I mean, I understand, you know, seed companies, they need the orders as soon as possible so they can so they can go ahead and plan and get the logistics figured out and make sure they get all the seed they deliver that people want to everybody by, you know, March and April. So, you know, it's not easy for the seed dealers, but flip side for the farmers, I mean, I don't even want to think about next year's crop yet. We just got done with this year's crop. You know, I'm still trying to catch up on sleep and and getting over all the all the getting over this year but you know it's it's what we got to do so i'm gonna give you a little insight into what we uh and what goes into picking next next year's varieties now for me uh i try to keep uh, seed choices simple uh, for one thing when it comes to corn and soybean seed we only plant pioneer not because we necessarily think that they make the best seed the highest yielding seed you know just about every company has varieties that that are high yielding but uh, the thing about pioneer is is that my seed rep was uh, one of my best friends from childhood he grew up right down the road from us and uh, he actually scouted our cotton uh, after we got out of college he scouted our cotton for uh, for several years so he knows our ground pretty much as good as i do and when it comes to maximizing your yield on seed, especially corn seed, putting the right variety on the right acre is the most critical choice you can do. You can pick a uh, top yielding variety and put it on the wrong acre and it'll fall flat on its face, won't do anything. So picking the right variety and putting it on the right field is probably one of the most critical decisions we make all year long. And since he knows his ground as well as I do, he knows his varieties better than I do. Uh, I rely heavily on his advice on where to place what varieties. Anyway, here's the choices from Pioneer for corn seed for this coming up year. So we got eight different varieties that are main offerings in this area that they feel are real suited. Uh, out of these, we have prior experience with Pioneer 1077, 1197, 1464, 1847, and 1870. Those are the ones that we've planted in the past. So we've seen how they've done on our ground in different environmental conditions. Uh, got new for this year, 2042 and 1506. Uh, we have not seen those yet. We've only seen them in yield trials. Now on each of these brands, or each of these numbers, you see two or three numbers listed. And that's just uh, the, that's just the trait package with that particular variety. Like if you look at the 1870 here, uh, you see you got 1870R, 1870AM, and 1870YHR. The 1870R is a straight Roundup Ready variety. It has no insect uh, tolerance built into it. It's what we use as, it's what we can use as a refuge. 
the AM is Acre Max. So that's where it's got the refuge in a bag uh, already blended in with it. There's no refuge requirements. However, we can't plant that because we're in a cotton county and the refuge requirements are different for us. We're supposed to plant. Uh, we're supposed to plant at least a 20% refuge because we're in a cotton county, as opposed to I think a 5% refuge, which would be in a non-cotton county. And then the 1870 YHR that's got the yield uh, yield guard corn borer uh, pack uh, package in there to protect against lepidopter and pests. Looking at soybeans. They don't have one of these nice little pamphlets made up for soybeans yet. But uh, right here, this page is uh, soybean varieties from Pioneer that we have available to us. Uh, some of these I've never even heard of. I really don't know. If, I really doubt that all of these are offered here in West Tennessee. But up here at the top, you got the uh, you got the enlist varieties, which are tolerant to uh, 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 which are tolerant to, to Liberty, and the enlist uh, herbicides. And down here, the biggest section, you got the Roundup Ready to Extend beans, which are tolerant to Roundup and Extend. Down here, you got conventional uh, varieties, which aren't tolerant to any herbicides. And then you got Liberty Link down here at the very bottom. We're only going to pay attention to the Extends because the Extends have the highest yielding genetics in them. The Enlists are new and uh, typically when they come out with a new technology the first year or two, they don't have the, the the yield hasn't really been bred into these varieties near as much so they're typically going to be a little bit lower yielding but if you have problems with specific weeds that the other chemicals can't control you might want to consider, consider that because it might outweigh uh, the the yield drag might might be worth the the extra benefit you get from weed control uh, out of these, we have prior experience with a few of them, uh, 48A60s, 46A57, and 42A96. I typically don't like planting uh, uh, early group fours right here, either late, three, either late threes or early fours because that, those can be ready when we're busy shelling corn. I prefer, my preferred package is to stay in the late fours, uh, either a 4.7 or 4.8 maturity. Uh, for group fives, I prefer 4.9 or 5.0, but the pro problem we're kind of running into this year is my two preferred double crop varieties, you know, 49A36 and 50A85X. They have discontinued, so, and they've come out with new varieties. And again, that's getting, uh, that's getting into a problem we face. Uh, these companies are swapping varieties so quickly, I mean, we'll, we'll typically, the way we'll do it, we'll, we'll typically see a new variety in test plots, and if it does well, they'll be available for production the following year, and then we might only have that variety for three or four years. Well, it takes you at least one to two years to figure out exactly how good that variety is and where the best place to put it is. Then you get maybe one, two years of putting that variety on the right piece of ground, and then by the fifth year, it's typically gone and replaced with something else. Uh, but here, but the big thing is we found two varieties that perform well in double crop, and those are typically the only two we use, and both of those are gone for next year, so I'm kind of at a loss on what we need to do for double crops, because I can't plant a large part of my acreage in a proven variety that I know is going to do good, and then maybe test out a new variety on a limited number of acres to see how it does. You know, i got to put all my faith in double crop beans on for two on varieties that I've never chosen. So anyway, here's a spreadsheet that I created a few years ago just to make it easy on figuring seed. Do we got to start out with uh, start out with corn up here? We got uh, the variety that we're going to plant. Uh, we put in the farm number here, and then we have the acres. Put in the population, and then it automatically figures up how many bags we need. Corn comes in a bag size of eighty thousand seeds per bag. And then going down here, uh, soybeans, kind of same thing here, our population. And soybeans come in bags of uh, 140,000 seed per bag. And then Pioneer sells 45 regular size bags in a bulk bag. So we typically buy in bulk. Very few dealers actually handle paper bags anymore because you're having to deal with such, such, with such a large volume. 
And then going down here to cotton, uh, we're going to hold off on picking our cotton varieties. We don't get the the we don't get the good discounts on early ordering cotton. I'm gonna wait on ordering cotton until the University of Tennessee publishes their uh, publishes their seed guide that has all the plot data from this year in it, so I can go through and pick the best cotton varieties. Now this is a compilation of the test plots that were done here in West Tennessee. I think we got a couple in uh, Western Kentucky, but this is why we take the time to put in test plots for, for both the University of Tennessee and Pioneer. Here's a rundown of all the different varieties that were involved. They actually had a couple of decals in with their plots just for uh, comparison purposes. And then here's the hybrid average over here. Uh, they got the top yielding ones highlighted. Uh, right here, the number one, the green, 206.83, that's a decal 67.44, which I know has been, been a good one. It's a good one on good ground. Uh, number two, right below it, is Pioneer 1847. Uh, we've had experience with it, planting it. Then number three is a brand new variety, Pioneer 1506 YHR, came in number three, and that's the average of all of these test plots. But this is why we do test plots. That 1506 that came in number three. If you look at it, everywhere it's highlighted in a, in one of the tests, it was uh, it was in the top three. So 1506, it played. It was in the top three there. That plot, that plot, and then I think it was close in some of the others. But then you go. We look at we look at mine. This is my test plot right here. It came in number three, and then uh, at the, the top number one and number two were 1870 and eight, 1847. So seeing that it's in the top three of all of these plots, but also it was in the top three in my plot under my practices on my land, makes me pretty confident that it's a variety that I need to take a look at for next year. And then others, uh, 1077, uh, right up here it didn't place uh well in fact it was the worst one in my plots but i know from experience that uh this plot where i had these where I, the land where i had these plots is some top yielding plots i know this variety 1077 it's a good one for your earlier uh, planted ground your uh, hills that are more prone to stress it doesn't have the top end that some of these other varieties have but on your tougher ground that doesn't have as high of a yield potential, it's going to be a better fit than what some of these other uh, more racehorse varieties are. And then 1464 right here. Look, see it came in at uh, 216. So it was below the top yielders. But I know from prior experience that it's an excellent mid-season variety. In fact, it's what I entered into the NCGA corn yield competition this year and actually got me third place in the local yield competition. I know it's got some good top top end, and it's also uh, it's also got some pretty good stress. So it's pretty much a go-anywhere hybrid. It might not win the top yield, but it's probably not going to let you down either. So... We're not always, uh, when picking varieties, we're always not looking to hit a home run because you'll fail more often than you'll hit a home run. We're looking for good, solid uh, varieties that will perform under a wide range of conditions, and I know 1464 will do that. And then the top yielders, 1847 and 1870 right there, you know, we're going to plant those again. We're going to put those on our better ground. Those are longer season varieties. Uh, at 1847, it's a 118 day variety which is about as almost as long a season as you can get. The 1464 is 114 days. The 1506 is 115 days. And the 1077 is 110 days. So we're going to be spreading out our maturities pretty good, which will also spread out our risk. You know, if we were to put, if we were to plant all long season or all early season, if we have the wrong weather conditions at the wrong time, you know, we could severely hurt our corn crop because all the corn would be the same maturity. So we might have weather that would hurt the 1077, but maybe, uh, but maybe we might get a rain in the nick of time because the uh, 1847 is going to be later. We might get a rain in the nick of time that will allow it to, to, to keep on growing and, and produce, produce yield. So it's, uh, re it's really going to be tricky for us this year to pick varieties. Our rotation is really getting messed up this year because we're losing about 25% of our acres 
for uh, for this coming year. It looks like we're on 2021. Here's our total acres for this coming year, 1551. Uh, we had uh, we had two we planted 2,000 acres here in uh, 2020, and uh, we're losing we're losing all this ground right here. Some of my best yielding ground. Uh, the farmer decided uh, he wanted to try and farm it himself again. He thinks he can make more money with him working himself rather than uh, being on a share rent with me. So I totally understand. It's a that's a tough pill to swallow to lose, you know, almost 25% of your acres and then it being some of your best ground on top of that. So, you know, our normal three year rotation of corn, cotton, and then wheat and soybeans has been messed up because, uh, you know, certain crops we know are more likely to produce more income. You know, we know that a uh, wheat soybean combination and then also cotton are probably going to be our two biggest revenue generators per acre. So we really don't want to drop those acres down that much. So uh, we're going to try and keep our cotton and then wheat and soybean acres up as much as possible. And we're really going to drop down our corn and full season soybean acres just because at current prices, you know, uh, corn is a more, it's probably the most risky crop we got as far as yield. Uh, also, the price is not all that great. And then uh, soybeans, the revenue potential on soybeans just isn't going to rival cotton and wheat and soybeans. So we're going to drop both of those acre, acreage down from where they were this year and then try and maintain our cotton and our, our, our wheat and soybean acres. So anyway, this is, this is what we've come up with for this year. Uh, total, we're going to have 364 acres of corn that's going to be down from the 500 we had this year and we got one farm that's going probably going to be low yielding it's got some real tough soil on it some real thin soil it's also got a couple of nice bottoms we got 82 acres so we think 1077 is going to be the best fit there it's going to be the least risky but it's also going to offer some top end yield potential and we'll need uh, almost 27 bags of that and then on these next three farms, uh, they're up there in Madison County. Uh, it's a lot better soil. We've got some good bottom grounds and some and some pretty deep hills. Great fit for 1464 there. Uh, these are the populations we're estimating on that. We'll need uh, 34 and a half bags of that variety. And then uh, then we're going to get into some of our best ground. A lot of bottom ground, a high corn yield potential. That's where we're going to put our longer season varieties. Uh, 1506 and 1847 right there uh, you know we're going to have uh, about 100 acres in 1506 uh, that's probably a little more acres than I'd like to try in a new variety but uh, according to the plot data you know it's it's a pretty safe bet to do well so we're going to try it out there and then 1847, but these were, we're not going to plant 100% 1847 and 100% 1506. We want to get some refuge acres in there. So we're going to select the 1870 R on and mix it in with these two varieties. Uh, right here with 1847 on our 12 row planter, we're going to fill 10 rows up with 1847 and we're going to put uh, two rows in 1870. And then with 1506, because it's, uh, not a proven variety to us yet. Uh, we're going to put three out of the 12 rows with 1870 on it. So even if 1506 doesn't do maybe what we think, at least we got 25% of our rows is going to have 1870, which we know what it's going to do. So that's going to allow us to get a refuge there. And then we're going to try to do a little bit of 2042. It's a real tall variety. It's a full season. And we're going to use it on our corn maize. Uh, you know, yield is not a factor on our corn maize. We want to grow corn. We want to grow as tall a corn we can, and that's going to stand a long time. And a long season variety that's known to grow tall, I think, is going to be a good fit of it. And we're going to need a little over two bags of it. Going down to soybeans again. This is where this is where we kind of got in a bind because they did away with our uh, double crop uh, varieties that we used, and the bulk of our soybeans is going to be double crop. We've got. 470 acres uh, total of wheat planted. So all of those are gonna be double cropped with soybeans. And I think on top of that, we're gonna have about 160 acres of full season beans. So we know for full season beans from prior experience that 48A60 is the best variety out there. It's got some really top end yield. It stands well, just a super high yielder. We've got 
three years of experience with that variety, so that's the only one we're going to plant for our full season. But because we got, uh, we've never tried it in a double crop before, but because we got two brand new uh, varieties for double crop, we're going to go with a proven variety and try it in some double crop. It's a little bit earlier than what I want, but uh, we're going to try it anyway. This is a 4.8 maturity, so we're going to try two farms totaling about, uh, totaling about 75 acres of 48A60s. Then we get down to all of our double crop acres. 47A64, according to the seed rep, it's supposed to be a real tall growing variety, which in a double crop scenario can be a very good thing because they're planted later, they can come under moisture stress and all right, because we know uh, that this uh, 4.7 uh, maturity variety is uh, tends to get some height on it. We think it's going to be pretty good fit in a double crop scenario. So we're going to plant it on about 225 acres out of the 460 we got. And then uh, we don't know much about this 5.3 variety. We know it's a fully determinate variety, which means uh, if it gets hot and dry, it has a chance not to put on as many nodes as an indeterminate would. So depending on the year, it could get enough height or it could be short. We just don't know. So we're going to try it on a smaller amount of acres of some of our better ground where it potentially won't come under as much stress. And we'll just see, see how it grows this year and how we like it. Well, that's uh, going to wrap it up for this video. I kind of broke my off season rule. It's, now 6.20, supposed to be home of 5. Don't like staying uh, past 5 for work, but anyway, I just wanted to go ahead and show y'all uh, how how we go about making the most important decision of the year, selecting our sub selecting our seed varieties. You know, just the kind of the thought process that goes in into picking the right varieties that we think will work work for us. Uh, so you know, hope hope y'all enjoyed this video, uh, the the tour through the new exhibit of the museum, uh, something we're really proud to be a part of. Uh, if you get a chance, encourage y'all to go go visit and check it out. I'm kind of at a loss on exactly maybe what kind of content to post this winter. I do know we're going to do several special videos. We're going to do a farm equipment tour, a tour of our facilities, probably a history of our farm. But as far as the day to day stuff. You know, to me, it's definitely more boring than the uh, than, than than the stuff you've normally seen. You know, us harvesting or planting or or whatnot. So, uh, if there's something particular y'all want to see of what we do in the off season, you know, be sure to leave us a comment. And uh, if it's something we do, or if it's something we can incorporate in the video, you know, we'll be happy to do it. You know, we want to provide content that people want to see, and we just don't want to be just putting out a video just to have a video out there. Uh, you know, if, if people aren't going to watch it. There's no sense in me taking the time to actually to, to actually make that video. So if there's something you want to see, be sure to leave us a comment and let us know. Uh, appreciate y'all watching, and until the next video, we'll see you then.